Hi, Richard Nick Coffin, 616. How are you? I want to ask you a question and it's going to mess with your mind. I watch this debate going on and on. It's always one of these smaller debates on YouTube. There's the pro side, the positive side, and there's the anti side, the, you know, the wanting it banned sort of fuck it type. But both of them see themselves as advocates of the same sort of ideology, trying to protect the people who are victims of a certain Let's call it an industry, an entertainment industry. Let me just walk you through. I want to describe, I want to go into this too. I want to talk about this entertainment industry. I want to talk about this form of visual audio media that seems to cause so much controversy, but at the same time doesn't cause as much as I think it should. You've got this massive, it's worldwide, renowned, top, make billions of billions of billions all over. The people in charge of it, are ridiculously wealthy. There are different levels in this industry. There are people at the top who do the world, you know, who make videos and DVDs and magazines and TV shows. They are used for depicting images and human interaction, all of which is staged and not real. It's done for the purposes of entertainment. And it's always um, a very visual, a very, very lowbrow based sort of, it, it appeals to your instincts. So too many people in a state of news makes no difference, virtual undress, in a physical act. It's not, there's no real sort of emotion there. These performers, particularly the the, the, folk, the main performer, the focal uh, the focal point, and you look you know you look at them and they are they are put through so much physical distress. They, you know, and you, you can't argue with that they look they look, they look nice in, in a way, but they don't look normal. You know they have to sort of their bodies have been made to sort of you know, enhanced in ways and they get overworked they get over they get overstressed they're forced to fucking work in, in conditions that they can't handle that their body can't take but they get in for the money and they can't do much else it dim it's degrading it's demeaning it takes away the actual emotional the human aspect of it the a real sort of you know, human, that real personal element and turn these people into cartoons and the people who watch this stuff they're going to end up sort of just taking it taking it too seriously, they're going to get too into it and to the point where they think they can behave like that they can use this juvenile fucking uh, dialogue, they can, they can put themselves in these ludicrously un, unrealistic stuff, they're just like the pubescent fucking scribblings of an ADD, ADHD suffering teenager and then you get to the serious side the performers who are the focus point of this very thing, they are the reason it's watched, there are, there are obviously other performers but they're just sort of there to make up the numbers. When you look at the rate of death that these performers have, the life expectancy is very low. It's very hard for them to get out of it. And there's very little good treatment for them afterwards. And I've watched a lot of it. And you look back and you think, it looks like so much fun. But then you find out, you go, yeah, this looks horrible. These people, it, it's, it, and, but at the same time, it's really popular. People love it. How can you make this disconnect in this, this industry that does this, that people choose to go into, that people choose to stay in? But at the same time, you know, oh, these people are exploited. They're just parading around like a meat market. And you do sometimes feel a sense of guilt. But you know what? So what? There are human beings who do things that are very dangerous and they die. We, make, we go for the glory. We go for the fucking... We go for what we want. And we, we do it because we love it. But there needs to be some middle ground here. We can't, we can't just patronise these people. We can't just pat treat, these, treat these people like they're fucking victims of their own fucking weakness. But at the same time... You can't argue that there has to be some sort of way that this can be done without all this misery. And you probably think I'm talking about pornography. And of course, no, I'm not. You know what I'm talking about? This. professional wrestling. Every single argument, complaint and concern that I hear from the anti-crowd about pornography exactly describes wrestling, pro wrestling perfectly. They have the same problems, in fact, when it comes to, um, when it comes to physical damage to the performer, when it comes to unfortunate um, mistreatment and um, uh, physical distress, and also when it comes to shortening, shortening life expectancy, wrestling's worse. 
Wrestling is more destructive, and it actually kills more people. Both of them have these problems. There's no real argument other than that. There are these two industries. They are identical in every way. There are arguments that apply against the porn dog exactly for the rest. Differences. These people, this one, the pornography, it's a focus on the women. And at the end of the day, the focus on the wrestling is the men. And yet, where are the anti-wrestling debaters? Where are these people campaigning to get wrestling banned? Where are these people who don't, who don't want these men, who patronise these men to say, you shouldn't be wanting to get involved in this? Where are the people you know, objecting to this to a level that is even more significant? Why is that? I'm not saying it's because they're men. I'm not saying it's, and I'm not saying that both of them are cancelling each other out. I'm just asking you. Why do you think people give such a shit about the uh, safety of women in porno, but most people don't give a flying donkey's fucking Sunday morning left-handed wank about the safety and the health and the well-being of the men in professional wrestling? Richard Dickhoff from 616, good night, may God be less, if you smell what the dick is cooking.